Hey, look who just walked in, folks. It's it's comedy star Bob Saget. <laughs> I'm comedy star. God. It's like a Bullwinkle cartoon. With his bits and sketches. I have all my little funny little skits that I do. Yeah, yeah. People, love, people come up, and over the years, they always say to comedians, I love your little skits. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They're cute. They're adorable. They're, they're, they're adorable. Funny. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself, sir? I'm really good. Yeah. I'm really good. I'm out uh, on the little promo ho thing. What do you, my... you promo? That was I'm the thing. I asked my, asked my, uh, my producer, what, what's he, what's he flacking? So what? I could ask you, and he didn't know. I'm just a uh, well. It's the Comedy Central roast I where see. they roasted me, and yeah. I survived it. And yeah, I think it's a funny show. It's painful. Uh, for me, where do they do the roast um, out there? Right, it's it, not it, one of it, the friars things. No, it was in L.A. At, and they shot it at Warner Brothers on a soundstage. They made a whole big to do out of it. But how do you do it? How do you do it? Like uh, you know, Comedy Central does not really let four letter words on there. They bleep them. It's a filthy roast. Yeah, they say it's well, one of the that's, dirtiest. That, that's the that was the thing about a roast. Roasts were like the moment in which all these comedians who in the old days had to work clean, right, could go into this little cloistered area called the friars, right. and just tell the Dirtiest jokes known to man, or the maskers, or the, huh? the maskers in L.A. thing. The maskers, maskers in L.A. Did you ever? Did you ever hear that thing? It was Jack Benny and George Burns, and it was for yeah, Joe absolutely. E. Lewis. Yeah, and it was uh, a filthy, filthy, horrible thing. And they said things I can't say on here. Yes, you can. Uh, the, <laughs> I believe it was Jack Benny said, uh, or no, George Burns said he uh, Trixie Hicks was trying to ride a Kotex side saddle. <laughs> Uh, that's George Burns. <laughs> that's George Burns. That's the Burns. best thing I ever heard. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, all these guys probably would have worked well dirty. They had no you know? trouble doing it. Jack Benny, you know, Jack Benny cursing was just hilarious. Yeah. Because, you know, I guess that's the joke. Fuck you. Right. You know? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Red Buttons, I was, uh, would go to a bunch of roasts years ago, and Red would always get up, and he had a couple standards, which were, he would talk for a while, he'd do a couple jokes, he wasn't cursing, and then he would go... And in case you missed it, fuck. <laughs> just, just say the word. Well, you know, no. those Catskill comics right. were among themselves filthy. Horrible, yeah. I mean, and that's the tradition of the Friars Club in New York. I mean, right. I've gone to a couple of Friars Club dinners, you know, where they get the guys, the old guys, to get up and tell jokes. These are the funny, funniest human beings alive, and nobody knows who they well, are. Well, uh, Bernie Brillstein passed away, and I uh, was at his memorial. He was an agent. For uh, ma- a manager. manager. And, a, and a producer. Produced Ghostbusters, and he was Belushi's manager, so yeah. he was part and parcel of a lot of those projects. But he got them sold, and he also ran Lorimar Movie Company for a long time. He, um, Norm Crosby spoke mm-hmm. at his, at his uh, memorial, and it was so interesting. He was so funny. And these guys, you know, these are these are old guys, yeah, and there were yeah. a few of the old guys left. Mel Brooks was in the room, and people that just loved Bernie because he was the old school manager type. But the, the those guys are, you know, Don Rickles is um, a friend of mine, and he he uh, he's he just did a thing, actually a tape thing for my roast. But he's there. there are, there's no one left. There's no it's, one. It's, well, go, yeah, it's yeah, happening but, quick. It's still there. These guys still at the Friars Club who are mm-hmm. well into their seventies, eighties. Maybe '90s, right? Who get up, and you go, "This is the funniest guy I've ever heard in my life." And but nobody, and I can't even remember his name now. Yeah, you know. I went there for lunch. Jeff Ross took me for lunch yeah. there, and it was on my birthday a couple of years ago. And I'm sitting there, and there's a guy. I get a phone call. There's a dial phone next to my table. I pick it up. It, it rings. The guy goes, "Happy birthday!" And I look over. There's a man three feet from me. <laughs> <laughs> with like weird red uh, orange hair, and he must have been ninety. His name was Shecky. <laughs> he looked like a Shecky. His name was Shecky. <laughs> he had he had caramel corn, see through hair. Yeah, yeah. But it was my birthday, and an old man was calling me. He was a comedian. <laughs> well, at the Friars. I, I, I have a friend who belongs to the Friars Club, so I go there a lot for lunch, okay, or or dinner, or whatever the occasion is. And they are it's that. It, it, that the Friars is going to die just because the last member will die. I mean, younger comics are not joining. Well, it like that's why, older like comics. Jeff Ross is a friend of mine, and he's a, he he did also the roast on Sunday. And he's trying to get all of us, you know, get come. Let's bring in the new blood. There's you know, to new yeah. blood, you got to clot your blood to eat there. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's. Yeah, I guess you can have a salad. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a lot about uh, corned beef and stuff. You know. Have, have you ever gone to their uh, their uh, Sunday brunch? No, that's what they oh, tell me about. Oh, oh man, that's why they're all dying. <laughs> that's why they're dying. It's I'll every to, fattening, <laughs> artery clogging piece of food you can have. I'll go to Second Avenue Deli. We second that that I'll just have the fried chicken skin and then just kill, <laughs> yeah, kill the, myself. The, the take, Grieben they call it. Ugh, a gr- gr- Grieben. Grieben. And what's greb- grebenus? That's another the same thing. Mm. And then Lipitor. That's the thing that's that it. is the is the big, uh, the major enemy of Greben. <laughs> it's like someone from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, right. Greben and Grebenus <laughs> Greben had a giant war. Greben and Lipitor. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, well, when we talk about working dirty, all these guys would have loved to have worked dirty, but they couldn't. So they worked clean, and they were still hilarious. Well, it's fascinating to me because I idolize those guys, and that, that and then I go and have my blue streak, you know. And now I'm feeling like not being as dirty right now for some reason. Because so. you were, I gotta say, <laughs> one of the dirtiest comedians <laughs> I've ever nuts. seen on stage. I guess I still no, am. And but... when I would tell people that, they go, "You mean that guy on Full House? Right? I said, He's the dirtiest guy." Well, we hung out. In the business I would today. do your show in San Francisco way yeah. before I got a gig, and I would just work all the clubs there. And you were very um, wonderful to comedians. You yeah. had anybody you thought was funny, yeah. which some people didn't even know about. Like I, I want to do. I'd love to see Jeremy Kramer become something oh, yeah. gigantic. But I nobody mean, even knows where to find him anymore. I think I can find him. He does comedy at a, at a couple of places in really? L.A. He does some stuff. There are these stuff. guys, you know, and I, I keep talking, I've mentioned these before. They're these guys who uh, are uh, what we call the comedian's comedians. Yeah. These are the guys, everybody goes, Jeremy Kramer. Everybody in the business knows Jeremy Kramer. Yeah. Anybody in this audience know Jeremy Kramer? Probably not. Right. And yet he's probably one of the funniest guys around. He did. I did a couple and, things with and him. And I think that comedian's comedian paralyzes people. I think it the does. room gets too small. You need to. Yeah, you need yeah. to open it up. Yeah, yeah. Because you're trying to make just your your friends laugh, your peers laugh, because you love well, comedy you figure, so much. You and, figure if your peers are laughing, it should all be offered to you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know it as well as anybody else. You can be the greatest comedian in the world, but if you don't have the eye of the tiger, if you don't go out and get this thing, and you have to, yeah. you have to get the audience has to love what you're doing. Yeah. That's the weirdest part because yeah. it's not it's not party of one. It's you know, and I, that's why sometimes I'll do things. That was for them. This is for me. Yeah. This is for my friends. You know, and I'll work as quick as I can to do a little bit of everything for everybody, which may not be the right. Yeah. You know, just that's how I am. You know. But then I'll look at someone like the the greatest. You know, George Carlin that, that yeah. ever lived. One of them, and um, he did what he did, and they found him, and and you know. I'm, yeah, but they very seldom find them. In fact, these comedians, comedians, for the most part, never get heard from. One of them that did okay, and I, we can't still can't figure out why, is Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah. I mean, Gil- Gilbert. Gilbert did the roast. It, it was astonishing to watch. He's become his own. He's the mini- funniest human being on the planet. It's an so enigma. I've spent three New Year's Eves in a row with Gilbert Gottfried. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I got to tell you, they were mem- memorable. You don't need fireworks. His I don't voice need is louder. No. What's amazing is when he did the roast, he went uh, last. He was right before I went up to do my rebuttal. And he, um, the moment he takes the, the stage, the moment he yeah. got to the podium, um, we're all gone. All the comedians are gone. And this, are, you know, it was Jim Norton and Norm MacDonald. It was a hardcore dais. And, yeah. Uh, Jeff Garland and all, a lot of people you like, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Susie Essman. I mean, we, 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 the moment he filthiest woman working. She's so business. funny. She's so. She's funny. A, in case people don't know who we're talking about. She's on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And plays Jeff Garland's wife. Right. Really, the bitch and of all bitches. She was so. She hated Larry David on the show. And yeah. She actually said on on stage uh, during the roast that she saw my girlfriend. As one thing we're sure about her, she's not a star fucker. <laughs> 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 Everything was designed to ruin me as a human being. Well, that's what roasts are supposed to do. It, it did it, and and Gilbert went last, and it was um, we were all, it, it, for a lot of us. It's just an aha moment because he started with something which I won't say because I don't want to ruin it, you know, totally. Because he um, yeah he just kept saying it over and over again. Well, I could say it. He said that I did not um, that my name uh, I hate saying my own name that I did not um, uh, rape and kill a girl in 1990. And he repeated it probably about eight times. And, and if you have any proof, unless you have proof <laughs> that he – and it, it's pretty amazing. I think it's on the, the uh, Comedy Central But website. he is one of those people that was a comedian's comedian. Yeah. And he made it. 
Yeah, because it, he did a lot of great voiceover work too, which is yeah. great. You know, he yeah. was the parrot and Aladdin and all yeah. that, and Amflack yeah. or whatever. He does birds. He's basically birds. He is a bird. Yeah, he so is. A he's bird. a squinty little bird, and he is just hilarious. And uh, he 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 blew the roof off. It was at, it was I think Aristocrats yeah. when they showed that clip from the Hugh Hefner roast yeah. that couldn't be on the air because it was insane. He's he's. He's got that medium down. He's got that medium shot on television. Yeah, he's got it down. This was the perfect uh, place for him to, to do what one, he did. One New Year's, uh, I, uh, uh, he, every time I see Gilbert, I can, he, he can be walking across the street. I'll hear this voice yell, Alex Benny, is still alive? <laughs> and I get this constantly from him. And finally, we're at, we're at a party with Soupy Sales, who is not oh. in good shape these days, oh. right? Right. And he looks at me and he goes, is he still alive? <laughs> Anyway, so this is Bob Saget, uh, and he, you see, you're working clean. No, what happened to you? No, I'm actually I'm, I'm doing my HBO special that I had uh, last year was was pretty blue, mm. and uh, I'm just bored with, with dropping the f bomb right now. But you, you know, you kinda, I can't stop yeah, myself. Let me, let me, I mean, I can't. But also, there's another it. there's another good reason for you to do it, and that is you worked all those years. You know, you, uh, look. Uh, nobody blames you for taking jobs. Right. Right? Because the idea is to work. Right. Right? And, and so I you, did them to the best of my ability, so given took, that position. You, you took, uh, <laughs> you took uh, a sitcom, which right. is, I guess, considered a treacly sitcom. It's, it'll, it, it'll be treacling forever. Yeah. Uh, full House. Right. You know, and, and you, you were portrayed as that sweet little Bob Saget. It's unbelievable. You know, with those two lovable Olsen twins, who you raised, by the way, kind into well, two fine women, by the way. Well, I like them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, and and uh, uh, the um, uh, you, you, so you had that reputation, and of course you did America's Funniest Home I did Videos, that, right? right? And you know, so you're Mister Clean, Clean, and somehow you I know, got a lot of code in. If you watch the video show and you watch the reruns of me, yeah. even though I look like a scrubbing bubble, yeah, I still would say things like, uh, "Here's co- these videos are going to spew right into your face," and I was talking porn. Yeah, but yeah, the people didn't. If you do the minutes of it, you'll go what, what, what? Right, but still, you were looked upon as Mister. All over the world, those sweet shows. Sweet guy, and, as and the clean your thing. act was the opposite. Always, yeah. You know, and and uh, and a wonderful act, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you even wrote songs. That you yes, and I still act. do. I my my HBO special. I sang uh, "My Dog Licked My Balls." It's a very <laughs> popular song. The college kids sing it with me in unison. <laughs> And they do, and they but, they. but did you feel it was important for you to do that to say to people, "Look, I'm not just that squeaky clean." You know, that's what I do for a living. This is what I do as an act. The truth of it is, and I've obviously because I've had to think about it because people ask me it. Uh, I I didn't put thought into it. I just went on stage. What I, I guess what I thought when I was a. Uh, when the Full House and the video show ended, I tried to do some directing stuff and love directing. Well, so I want to ask you about that. You directed and wrote a film, right? I directed a movie, a TV movie called For Hope uh, about my, I, I didn't write it, Susan Rice wrote it. I exec produced it and directed it, um, and it was about my sister dying of this disease, scleroderma. Yeah. And then uh, a couple years later, I directed the feature Dirty Work with Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang and a lot which of I, Which people. I saw, and I liked. I Thank you. it was terrific. Thank you. It did not uh, do that well. So, no, because I couldn't even remember the name. Right, of it. college kids now love it; they revere it. It's up there with Half Baked and those other ones that yeah. n- maybe didn't make a fortune that weekend, but uh, they, it is lived. And then um, I've done some others. A couple of years ago, I did this Farce of the Penguins thing, which was a takeoff on March of the Penguins, and yeah. Sam Jackson narrated. It was filthy, you know, stock footage of penguins. It was what it was. Yeah, it looked, footage looked like ass, you know, because it was. It was from nowhere. Well, there's nothing beats mm-hmm. a penguin saying it's dirty the hottest things. thing in the world. <laughs> Gilbert, of course, was one of the funniest. Gilbert and Sam Jackson yelling at each other. Um, he says, I'm freezing my nuts off. And Sam Jackson says, you don't have nuts. And Gilbert says, fuck you. And Sam Jackson says, fuck you, you nutless motherfucker. <laughs> so it's a good discourse. It's a good discourse. And so then, uh, and now I'm doing another I'm doing another sitcom as an actor that I like. That I'm, that I'm, I, I did a Broadway play here last uh, end of the year. You I did Drowsy in, Chaperone. Yeah, you're in Drowsy Chaperone. And so I'm, and you know, I, <laughs> friends of mine go, you know, you do a lot of things, none of them well. <laughs> you know, just tra- dabble in all the little things you like to do, Bob. But I, I, I am going back into a, um, I'm going to always do my stand up. Well, that must have been scary, though. It was the first uh, couple nights, but after opening night, when people told me that it went great and, and no one ran after me with pitchforks, I realized that. 
It yeah, was one still, of the greatest experiences. It's got to be scary because that's not what you do for a living. But I did a, I did a theater. I did an off-Broadway play here a few years okay. ago called Privilege, a Paul yeah. White's play. And yeah. that was one of the best experiences I ever had. I love acting a lot. And, yeah. and I, I get very fruity when it comes to the uh, thespian world. And then I and then Drowsy Chaperone was, I think, one of the best things I've ever do- experienced. I, I love in, in, in Well, you certainly acting. probably grew from the experience. It was incredible. Yeah. And, and, and it gave me less fear about anything. You know, because if you're in front of 1,600 people a show, eight shows a week. Well, you know what's different? You know what's different about theater than anything else? You're taking something which as a whole is like a movie on stage. Okay, you're telling a story, you're acting and everything. And then when you're through with it, you got to go do it again. Yeah. And again. And you get to try to and do again, it right. And again, try, and, then and you again, get, and again. Then you have a good one, and then you go, how do I replicate that? Yeah, so how many how many months did you do that? I did it from October 18th or 19th. October 19th, I started. Um, and then I, we closed December 30th, 30, 31st. Yeah. We closed New Year's Eve, I believe. And but it was, by it the was end, you, probably most actors start going a little nutty if they keep doing the same play. I was time. nutty from the word go because I it was uh, Bob Martin wrote this play. Yeah. And uh, it was the guys on stage the whole time. He takes a pee break in the intermission. This man in chair character in this yeah. play. And um, so you're on you're on the whole time. And, and I really got into it and it drove me a little nuts to learn it in two weeks i only had two weeks yeah. to rehearse it so yeah it was it was a pretty remarkable experience we're talking with bob saget uh the um uh, so you raised the olsen twins <laughs> their parents raised them i i just uh, was with them for eight years yeah and then uh, we're friends we're literally are friends and so i see them well, how could you not have worked that long at that age with them and not have them feel some kind of you're right, right if that if that didn't exist there would be a problem I, actually there was a party last week at jeff franklin's house the exec producer that, that wrote the show full mm-hmm. house and uh, and and ashley and mary kate weren't there but um uh john dave uh, coulier stamos Lori lachlan uh, Jody Sweeten wasn't there either. She mm-hmm. had to work, but Candace Cameron, Beret. How many, how many years that series? It was eight. It was really like seven and, and then a 13 from one season. So it's eight, eight seasons total. If, if you do eight seasons of a series. Can't you pretty well write your check for the rest of your life? If you save your money because yeah. you don't own it. People all think that No, you don't get, own it, but you get you get residuals? Residuals are nothing. People, buy, unless you have ownership or points in a show, which I did not, which yeah. um, uh, you don't. Uh, you get seven dollars. You know, you get like checks for nothing. It's it, it turns. You get into, writers cramped from signing all the checks. It's funny. I mean, actually, I watched uh, Conan a couple of ni- last week, and Kevin Costner was on there, and he showed his, you know, Field of Dreams, The Untouchables. You know, seventeen dollars, six dollars, five dollars, and that is just what happens. I actually have gotten checks for for uh, three dollars. Right. That's yeah. what happens. I've gotten th- eighty-five cents from Full House <laughs> from an airing. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's like you know Istanbul. You know, it third wasn't, run. Wasn't worth it to send it to you, was it? Uh, it's all funny because then what, well, it's what, like uh, that episode of Seinfeld where he gets writers cramp from signing all those checks from from Japan for right. the opening of some show. That's what it is, and it's not. It he's not tired of signing the checks from Seinfeld, however. He does not have to sign them, I don't think, because he owns the show. He part does. Of it, part he of does. It. He he uh, as he should. I always believe in yeah. ownership. Yeah. So Ownership's you're doing you're a doing thing. a new series. Doing a new series. Do you own any of this one, stupid? Not allowed to talk about it, but uh, <laughs> we don't talk about it till the ink's dry. But I, I am very happy. Things are good, and especially in this economy, in this okay, world, well, well, I get well, to how's, work. How's this different than any other? Uh, it is. Uh, it's. Uh, it's called Surviving Suburbia, and yeah. it's it's about a guy that doesn't really. It's by Kevin Abbott, who's a very good writer. He worked on Roseanne and a bunch of the people wrote on Mad About You and it's about you know relationships it's a guy who lives with his wife and he's married to her because she's his wife and he's got a 17 year old son and an 8 year old daughter and he doesn't he loves them but he doesn't really like them very much and he doesn't really like his neighborhood he doesn't really like people he doesn't really want to talk to anybody and a, a guy and his 17 year old daughter move in next door and he's attracted to her which is the conflict in the pilot is that he now, finds this Is this a series attractive. for network or for... This is for the CW, who are doing a really interesting uh, new palette, uh, a whole night owned by a company called MRC. So it's a, it's a new kind of CW's uh, model. CW's doing pretty well with Gossip Girl and... Yep, uh, and the 90210 is coming on. And yeah. uh, so we will be on 7.30 on Sunday nights, and we've got an order for thir- that's a, that's 13. It's a little, little dicey for regular TV. It's it is. All of the shows know. on that Sunday will all be like that. They'll be kind of, I think, a little more male-oriented. They're, they're Trying but I mean, new. having the idea of somebody being hot for a seventeen-year-old yeah. next-door neighbor, that, and and is... it's written by Kevin Abbott, who is kind of trying to 
bring himself out. Uh, and, not, and he's married happily, and he's got his kids, and he's kind of doing his own life. He's making his own, yeah, you know, autobiographical. I hope my family doesn't kill me for doing this show. So, yeah. and and it it reads really well. I'm I'm very excited about it because I I'm get to be in it, you know, and at, at, from start to finish. Good and we're luck doing, on that. Thank you. I, yeah. I think you you might like it if we do it the way we're trying to do it. Yeah. It's it's a guy that's just not, he does not really enjoy, he looks at people and goes like, he sees a, he, it opens with him urinating on his property and a, a woman goes by in a little, she's a, overweight and she's in a cart walking her dog. She's in a little motorized cart, scooter. Yeah. And he turns to his wife and he goes, you know, that, that's just not right. You know that yeah. that shouldn't she shouldn't be. You don't walk your dog. The purpose of walking your dog is walking your dog. You don't do that. <laughs> so it's, he's disgruntled, <laughs> which I I find amusing because yeah. at a certain point well, I'm 52. That's you. That's you. Yeah, it, it, we. I'm I'm both. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I like to think I'm a kind person, but I also enjoy looking at something and saying irreverent things about it. And what's happening with one or one hundred? That's gone. That's gone. I it was like a hit show. show. I like that show. Thank you. It was a hit. It's good that it's they say it's good to leave. It's one of those game shows that was interesting. Thanks. Yeah, they, they, uh, the NBC people didn't um, want to bring it back. And, I, I, you know, they figure out what they want to do. And, I mean, I can, I can never understand why Deal or No Deal is a hit. I mean, it's just... It's, it's, a, it's, it's Huh? It's an homage to how good Howie is at that thing. Yeah. That's a, and the, the producer's yeah, how, nice... And how, how sane he is that he isn't blowing his brains out from doing it week yeah. after week. And there's a guy named Scott St. John who also exec produced uh, uh, One Versus 100. Really good guy. And yeah. uh, Endemol runs a really good show. They they did a great it's job. A, it's a great show you had there. Yeah, right. it was. A, it's a... I would have done it. If, I would have liked to have done it if they kept going. The roast is censored, but uh, kind of uncensored. It's, it's 90 minutes long, yeah. and it's... Really filthy. No matter how you bleep it, it's filthy. Well, I've always kn- I've known you for years. I've always admired your work, and oh. I've always liked you as a friend. Same and, here. And uh, thank uh, you. Anytime you want a little airtime, yeah, we're here. We are. You know where we are. We're here thank at you. one I'll... of the world's largest broadcasting organizations. It's finally happened. <laughs> I will come here until until we both decompose. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay, it's Bob a deal. Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you.